welcome back to Gracie Mae's Tarot. So today we're going to be doing another future spouse reading, but it's going to be how would your future spouse describe you? So you're actually going to pick your group based upon the thumbnail, so pick one, two, or three. Um, if you're drawn to more than one pile, that's fine. The timestamps are listed below in the description box, just like always, and let's get into it. All right, pile one, welcome to your reading. So first we're gonna start with your tarot. Let's find out how your future spouse would describe you. And remember, this is your future spouse, so they're going to, of course, think that you're wonderful. So, you know, if you have a hard time, you know, accepting a compliment, then this could be a really great confidence booster for you as well. So let's see here, pile one, how would your future spouse describe you? How would your future spouse describe you? Pile one, please spirit. And a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. Pile one, how would your future spouse describe you? And if you have any love reading topics that you would like to see, just comment down below. I'm happy to keep doing the love readings because they seem to be really popular. Um, but any video suggestions really would be appreciated. All right, so pile one, how would your future spouse describe you? Okay, <laughs> I feel like this card is really wanting to come out. The way the deck is being right now is sort of making me think that um, they have so much to say. They're, your future spouse is coming through as someone who is very, um, very excitable and someone who is very, like once they start talking about you, even if they're not typically a very chatty person, once they start talking about you, they can't stop. So I think very early on in the relationship, they'll be gushing about you to all of their friends. Their family members will get tired of hearing about you. They'll be like, I know you're like really into this new person that you're dating or if they're just crushing on you. But I think right away, they will just, you will be on their minds and they just can't help themselves. I think that they're very smitten by you very early on. Um, they think they think you're really unique and special. I think that they definitely fall head over heels and love with you. I think it's an immediate attraction. This doesn't come off as like a slow burn. Um, this is like very fiery, like <laughs> a lot of attraction, I think on multiple levels right away. And it's funny, I think your future spouse is coming through as this Knight of Cups and you are presenting as the Queen of Swords. And I say that because they are coming across as the really sentimental, hard on their sleeve, like so in love with love, but also so in love with you, like very in touch with their emotions. Like they wouldn't, they wouldn't deny to themselves how they feel about you. I mean, it would just be, like I said, an immediate attraction. Now here's what's funny. With the Five of Swords separating from this Queen of Swords, um, you are presenting as this Queen of Swords. I think that you are a lot more guarded, and that doesn't mean that you're not attracted to this Knight of Cups, but your approach is so, so different in love. I think you're a lot more hesitant. I think you're a lot more, um, you're not as emotionally vulnerable and open. You know, like they wear their heart on their sleeve, whereas like you keep your heart close to you. You don't just openly share how you're feeling. Like they would definitely be the first person to say, I love you. Um, and it's funny, I feel like there's just this conflict between how like open they are and how closed off and guarded you are. I think that they kind of like rush forth and they're quick to declare how they feel about you. And that may scare you off a little bit. You may pull away. The more that they come towards you, you may pull away. There, there may be some conflict. Cause I think they are like so certain that you are the one 
Whereas I think that you are a little bit more on the fence and it's just because I'm just sensing this deep heartbreak that you've had before, these deep rooted trust issues. I think that it's your past and this fear of repeating your past that is making you a little bit more, or actually a lot more guarded. Um, yeah, because I, I think you come off as this like a little bit sarcastic, a little bit witty. Um, I'm getting like Dorothy from the Golden Girls vibe from you. Um, there's, this, there's this sassiness to you and it really turns on your future spouse. Like your future spouse loves that about you. It's kind of cute. It's like the more you're a little bit like mean to them, the more they're into it. Cause I think they are just so sweet and kind and lovable and very like cozy. And it's not like you're being hateful to them, but it's just that you're just really, um, it's like they like to banter with you and they just find it so cute that you're, maybe like your physical appearance is so different than your personality. Like maybe your personality is a little bit more tough, a little bit more like, don't mess with me. Um, you know, verbally, like you're really quick, like you would win an argument hands down with anybody. Cause I, I think with your communication, like you're so skilled at it. You're so talented with communication. Like maybe you have a moon in Gemini or a Mercury in Gemini. Um, I could see even like, I could even see like a Virgo Mercury or even, um, a fire sign Mercury, like Mercury and Leo. Like you're just really quick. Um, you know how like on like RuPaul's Drag Race when they have like the reading session um, or like, you know, like on like Real Housewives, they like throw shade, like that kind of thing. Like it's, but it's, it's intelligent and it's clever and it's not that it's mean spirited, but it's more so like you can hold your own. And, and I think that confidence and that self-assurance can be like intimidating to people. It's like you command respect as the queen of swords. Um, yeah, so this is the divine feminine here. So like if you're watching this and you resonate with divine feminine energy, then you can confirm that that is you um, and this is your future spouse. But if what I'm saying feels like it's flipped, then just flip it because sometimes the energies do get muddled when I'm reading. But I think for most of you, the, the Knight of Cups, the divine masculine is your future spouse. And remember, we're just talking about energy. We're not talking about gender when we say that. Um, but yes, I feel like you just draw them in. Like they love it when you tease them and they love kind of fussing with you. Like they love that banter. Um, yeah, because I think the attraction for them is so immediate. Like they can't get enough of you. They love, love, love talking to you. That's coming through so strongly. They love talking to you. Um, it's almost like enemies to lovers vibes. It's kind of funny but not really, like you're not, you don't really dislike each other. Um, it's kind of just, it's kind of just for show. It's, it's just very playful energy. Let's get maybe two more cards. So how would your future spouse describe you? I think we got a lot about your dynamic, which makes me very happy because I wasn't quite expecting that. Sorry, I was looking to see if you could see the cards. Oh, we got confirmation here of marriage. I actually want to move these here so you can see them better. Okay, now with the Eight of Cups, I feel like they see you as someone who is so strong and empowered. Like again, like I feel like you've been through so much in your life. You've had to overcome so much. Now remember this is a general reading, so it's gonna vary greatly from person to person, like what your individual challenges have been. But I think across the board for my pile ones, like you have been through so much in your life and you've had to walk away from a lot that wasn't serving you at this Eight of Cups. And your future spouse just admires your strength. Like they just see you as such a strong person. You know, I feel like they just have such admiration for you in that regard and with the four of wands here it's almost like they know how much you've had to sacrifice they know how much you've had to walk away from things that weren't serving you they know that you basically like have been put through the ringer and it's sort of like okay i now want to 
it's like I know that your life has been torn apart, broken down. You've had to like rebuild from the ashes both your life and yourself. I don't want you to have to build alone. I want to build with you. I want to help you, but I also want you to help me. It's, it's not like they're swooping in like a knight in shining armor, even though we have the knight of cups. Um, it's not like they're swooping in like that, but more so like they're coming through like they just really, they really want to show you that they can be your equal. It's almost like this knight of cups is saying like, give me a minute and I can become the king of cups. Like I, like it, it, you're very inspiring to them. It's like they want to get to your level. They want to get to your level in some aspect. Now remember, you could see this person already as the king of cups. This is them speaking to you, okay? So could be to, um, because they have such admiration for you, maybe in some ways, they just feel like you're, they, they kind of feel like they're not good enough. And that's probably because they're having to pursue you so actively and you are so guarded. So you're kind of like your guardedness is kind of putting them in a position where emotionally they feel like they're not good enough because I do think in some capacity in the beginning, you're rejecting them. And I don't think it has anything to do with them. It has everything to do with your past and this pain that you've been through and your inability to trust anybody, not specifically this person. And so they're feeling like they're not quite good enough for you because you're not opening up your heart to them. You will, obviously, this is the person that you marry, but I do feel like you are triggering some insecurity in them and that's why they're showing up as a knight and not a king. That's just my two cents on that. But I do feel like they want to be like a power couple with you. They want to be your equal. They want to build a solid future with you. And I think with the Four of Wands too, they romanticize the future with you a lot. Like in a sense of like, in a very innocent way, like they daydream about it. You know, they're fantasizing about it. Wow, this is like a very strong reading. I love this already. All right, pile one, how would your future spouse describe you? Pile one, how would your future spouse describe you? Pile one, how would your future spouse describe you? Pile one, how would your future spouse describe you? So we've got Ivy and we've got Summer Dragon. With this Ivy card, I kind of have a unique interpretation for this because this fairy in particular is the fairy that was selected for the actual tarot box um, that this deck comes in. And so this fairy to me is like the star of this whole deck because this fairy was chosen out of all the other fairies to be the cover right so like she's the cover girl and so i feel like this is your future spouse coming through and saying like listen there is no other you are like the center of my universe you are my world like once i meet you everyone else is really just irrelevant like i feel like that reassurance is coming through because they really really want you to be able to trust them and they know that's hard for you. They know that's hard for you because of your past. Now, I will also say with Ivy, I, I just think of the way that Ivy is growing around her and like shielding her and protecting her. I, I do feel like there's this energy here of your future spouse kind of really respecting the way, not only the way in which you take care of yourself, but also understanding that you have had to do that because other people in your life have failed you in some way or betrayed you in some way. So it's like they're, they're sort of giving a nod to your resilience and, to, and, and sort of understanding that it's not that you've isolated yourself on purpose, but more so that you've, you've done it out of survival and them saying, I recognize that and I get it. I get that you have been put in a position to where you can't rely on other people. You've had to be independent because other people have just 
let you down, you know? And for some of you, it's family, friends, past romantic partners, maybe all of the above, but whatever the case may be, like you've just been disappointed a lot. And so you've developed this self-resiliency and they're coming through and saying like, I get it, I understand it and I respect it. And I'm not trying to encroach upon that. Like I really want to respect your needs as an individual. Like I'm not trying to take away from your life and your freedom, I'm trying to add to it. Okay, so that's coming through pretty strongly here. There's a lot here about reassurance. And I do feel like they see you. I feel like they, I feel like they, maybe that's also why you pull away a little bit because this person really sees who you are to your core without you even having to go into all the details of your past. It's like they sense that. And it's because the Knight of Cups like has a level of emotional intelligence, right? Um, this is someone who's going to be sensitive and compassionate. So they get it. They get it without you even having to explain it. They just sense it in your energy. Like they can tell that you've been through things. And I think maybe initially that's a bit unnerving for you. Yeah, there's just this feeling here also of them like really, really almost wishing that. I feel like your future spouse may have physical touch as their love language because there's this energy here of just them wanting to hold you and wanting to take care of you. But then, but then it's like they're saying, don't worry though, I know that that can make you uncomfortable. You know, it's like, it's like they're just, they're coming through and saying like, I recognize what your needs are and I know that the way that I show love at times can be overwhelming for you, so I am willing to adjust. Because I, I think maybe that can make you a bit... Maybe if someone's like trying to hold your hand and like put their arm around you and um, you know, like maybe just physically moving the relationship faster than what you're comfortable with. Or even if you're just talking to this person and they're flirting with you in a way that involves touching you, maybe that makes you uncomfortable. And so I feel like that's them saying like, don't worry, like I'm willing to make these adjustments for you. Like, I love you that much. You know, it's like they sense what your needs are without you necessarily having to say it. Because again, I just feel like they can read you so well. Now with the summer dragon, this is a very sweet message. Um, with the summer dragon, it's like, I feel like they see the softness in you that other people miss. You know, other people just see this queen of swords, but I feel like they see your light and they see your warmth when other people overlook it and they see how sweet you are. And they understand that this Queen of Swords is really just a facade. This is just the superficial, like, outer layer of who you are. This isn't the core of you. This is what you've had to become to protect yourself, to gain respect, to survive, really. And it's not your core. It's not who you truly are. I think who you truly are is so much more lighthearted, so much more carefree, um, I feel like your inner child is like really wanting to come out, but I feel like you've just been hurt so much that you sort of, you sort of put like this cocoon around yourself and, and you sort of dim your own light because you're afraid of what your light will attract. And so you're mindful that some people are vultures, you know, you're mindful that some people have some healing and some wounds that make them a bit like parasitic towards you. And that probably sounds harsh, but that's just, that's what your experiences have been. Okay. Cause these are deep wounds that we're talking about here. And I don't think, I think that these are like multiple betrayals. Um, I don't think it's just one hurt. Although for some of you, maybe it was just one significant heartbreak. Um, but I do think for many of you, it's like multiple disappointments and with the green being here as well, it's, they see your heart chakra. They see your heart chakra and they want to help you open it up. And I feel like that's part of like your love journey. That's part of like what this person is meant to help you do. They, they just like want you to know it's safe for you to show the softer side of yourself. Because even though the Queen of Swords is a divine feminine, she's the most masculine out of all the divine feminines, out of all of the queens. Okay, like this is, you know, like a phallic image, like the sword, like that's very masculine. So 
it, it's kind of just saying like if you wanted to be the queen of cups someday which would be the match right to the to the knight of cups who i suspect is a king but <laughs> they're just not feeling super confident i think around you but um that would be okay if you wanted to be the queen of cups that would be okay that doesn't mean you always have to be the queen of cups you don't always have to be the queen of swords but it's okay it's okay to sometimes be rational and logical and it's okay to sometimes be emotional and spiritual and intuitive like you can be both you don't have to hide your light you can be the queen of wands if you want to be the queen of wands like it they, they just want you they want to give you space to truly be free and be who you are without always having to be so tough and so guarded and so self-protective i think is what's really coming through here Yeah, I, I feel like I'm talking a lot about just a few cards, but again, like your future spouse just is gushing about you. Like they just, they love you so much. There's just like this warmth like in my belly right now. Um, and I have the AC like blasting and <laughs> I, it's definitely their energy for you. I, it, there's just so much like... They just want to be like cozy with you. They just want to like wrap you up in blankets and <laughs> it's very sweet. All right, pile one. How does your future spouse feel about you? How would they describe you? How would your future spouse describe you? Pile one. Pile one. How would your future spouse describe you, please, spirit? <laughs> I feel like they're giving you a little bit of a... Uh, how would I put it? <laughs> yeah, this is funny. This is really funny. They're kind of giving you a little bit of a hard time right now. Because <laughs> they're saying, like, patience. They've had to be so patient with you. It's almost, they're kind of giving me this image of approaching, like, a skittish deer in the forest and not wanting to scare it away. Like, I just want to pet you. I just want to love you. I just want to touch you but I don't want to frighten you away. I don't want to freak you out. So there's this energy here of like them rushing towards you and like making you like this love offer, declaring how they feel about you. Um, you know, like buying you gifts, flirting with you, giving you lots of compliments, um, like really trying to like woo you and court you. Cause I, I do feel like this person's a romantic and they'll probably approach you in like a very traditional way. Um, but I think you're gonna be so like, <sighs> cause I think it's not that you don't want to be loved and it's not that you don't want to be in a relationship. It's like you want it, but you're afraid of it. <laughs> and so I do feel like you give these like mixed signals. And so they're saying like, I've had to be like really patient with you. And these delays and blocks are like definitely like your hesitation, your mixed signals. And they're kind of saying like, this is really on you. And like, if you want us to come into union faster, then go ahead and start on that healing journey. Go ahead and start to heal now. Um, go ahead and work on it. And we won't have to have these delays and blocks, but there's also this energy of don't worry, I'm willing to be patient and I'm not here to rush your healing. I want you to take as long as you need because I know you're the one. You're the one for me and I don't mind waiting. Okay. Now, if you've never had your heart broken or you, you're like, no, I've had like a really charmed life, then either this isn't your pile, but maybe you are meant to go through a karmic relationship or some sort of loss, something that pushes you to recognize like what you truly want and what you truly desire, something that pushes you to say like, I'm not settling for breadcrumbs and whatever the case may be. And that puts you on the path of meeting your future spouse, of meeting your like true lifelong partner. Um, so that could help some of you maybe determine like the timeline for when this is going to happen. Because I know, like, you know, all different ages are watching this. All right, pile one. 
How would your future spouse describe you? Oh yeah, communication. I feel like that's really been the heart of what they admire about you. Like they just love how great you are at communicating. Like they love talking to you. You're the type of person where they can have that like witty banter, they can flirt. Um, I think verbally like you're really good at flirting. Um, Cause there's just something again about you. Like you just drive them crazy. Like they just, they love it. They just love that banter back and forth. Um, but then they can have those deeper talks with you. There's just a lot here about quality communication, but there's also a message here of like them sort of being a bit, uh, hmm, how do I put it? Flabbergasted sounds like a bit strong <laughs> of a term. They're a bit perplexed. They're a bit perplexed because um, they're like, how is this person so witty and articulate and like they just hold their own and like any argument, any disagreement, like, wow. And yet they can't communicate how they feel. What is that? That's kind of like your future spouse being like, huh? What? Because they think it comes so naturally to your future spouse. Like it's so easy for them that it they're kind of perplexed by that. And so I think maybe that would be something to work on in your healing is how to, you know, find the vulnerability to be able to express how you're feeling without that fear. Because it's definitely from a place of fear that you're not able to do that. It's not, um, it's not an inability to do so. It's just from a place of fear. Now with self-worth, they're really wanting to hold up a mirror to you and show you how they see you. They want you to love yourself the way that they love you. And so that could be another nod to your healing journey and what they hope you sort of work on until they come into union with you because they really want you to see how beautiful you are, how attractive you are, all of your strengths, you know, like they want you to see how strong you are, I think more than anything. They want you to see that inner resilience. They're like, yeah, they, they, and they really want you to see how there's also beauty in your, there's also beauty and strength in your softness. And I think maybe you were taught that, you know, more feminine qualities are a sign of weakness. And they're like, I know you were this soft, beautiful soul before someone told you that that was wrong. And I wish that you could reconnect with that part of yourself and show it because I think you do show it eventually in like small increments to your future spouse, but that part of you stays mostly hidden and they, they love that side of you and they, they want you to feel comfortable shining that light outwards, showing your softness. You know, they, they want you to know that that feminine side to you is not weakness. Bottom of the deck, we have friendship. Yeah, I, I feel like there's such a, this is a relationship again where you're gonna have that solid foundation. So it's not just romantic in nature, you're also friends. Like even if the romance wasn't there, it is there. But even if it wasn't there, like you would still be such good friends, which is beautiful, love to see that. Okay, let's get some zodiac signs. So already with the Queen of Swords, of course, we have air signs, we have Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. So those could all be relevant. Pile one, how would your future spouse describe you, please, Spirit? Pile one, how would their future spouse describe them? Ah, Leo. Okay, I love this so much because Remember how I said they want you to shine that inner light out? This is how they see you at your core. So I think like on, cause we got a lot about sort of air sign, right? With Queen of Swords and the communication card. Um, I think that is like superficially how you present, right? Is that Queen of Swords. But I think deeper down, they see you as this Leo energy. They see you as someone who is so generous someone who is so strong, because we got a lot about strength, right? And Leo is the strength card in tarot. So they see you as someone who is strong, someone who is resilient, but also someone who is 
loyal, someone who's a great leader, someone who is so like little miss sunshine kind of energy, like happy-go-lucky, an optimist, like they just see this inner light and they're like, Sh please like shine that light out because Leo is still like empowered, right? Like Leo is the king of the jungle. Leo is still empowered. Like people still don't mess with Leo and Leo can take care of themselves, right? But Leo is also known as the lion and lions exist in a pride. They, you know, they work together. Um, you know, it's not the lone wolf kind of thing. So <laughs> with Leo here, it's like, it's sort of like they're like, listen, you can still have your strength, but you can also have your light, right? Leo rules the sun. You can still have your light. You can still have your optimism. You can still have your generosity. Your kindness is not weakness. That Leo generosity is not weakness. And I'm sorry that someone ever told you that it was. I also feel like they see you as a little bit stubborn. <laughs> I would say that with Leo. Yeah, they see you as a little bit stubborn and that's why they're not trying to rush you. Yep. <laughs> okay, let's end with like a little love token. Let's see, pile one. What love token does your future spouse want to share with you today? What love token does your future spouse want to share with you today? Let's see, oh, this one, this one, this one. Oh my gosh, good for a romantic sunset. There's so much about light and the sun in this reading. <laughs> I love that. They're like, not only do I want you to shine your inner light outwards, but I also literally want to watch the sunset with you. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's very cute. Okay, pile one. This was your reading. I hope it resonated. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you always know when I upload. And I will see you guys in my next one. I would also like to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been commenting, liking, subscribing, like all that stuff. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it so much. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care. All right, pile two, welcome to your reading. So let's find out how your future spouse would describe you. And like I was telling pile one, like if you struggle to take a compliment, uh, this could be like a good little confidence boost for you because obviously your future spouse is going to view you in probably a positive light. I would hope so, right? So let's find out pile two. How does your future spouse, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry guys, already. Crazy poo. Okay. Well, <laughs> We had a cat cameo. All right, pile two. How would your future spouse describe you? And a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. Pile two, please, spirit. How would their future spouse describe them? How would pile two's future spouse describe them, spirit? Pile two. Oh my gosh. A lot of Leo energy. You may have been drawn to pile one. If you weren't, that's okay though. But just right off the bat here. They definitely have strong feelings for you, just given that we already have two major arcana cards come out. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is cute because the four of wands also came out in pile one as well. Okay, bottom of the deck here, we have six of wands. And actually, let's just get one more card. Something's telling me to get one more card, so we will. Okay, Eight of Wands. And I'll say while I was pulling this Eight of Wands, the Ace of Cups also flipped over. So I would say your future spouse is likely someone that you haven't met. This is going to be a new love. Or for those of you not resonating with that message, your future spouse is someone who really admires 
how well you take care of yourself because the Ace of Cups can really talk about self-care. Um, I feel like maybe sometimes that gets looked over with the Ace of Cups because people are like, oh, new love, but also self-care. Um, so I feel like they really, really admire how well you take care of yourself, especially because we have Leo energy here. To me, like Leos, as a Leo myself, like we really prioritize taking care of ourselves. Like we understand in order to give to other people and share that Leo generosity, we have to first take care of ourselves. You can't pour from an empty cup. I think Leos understand that really well. So just wanted to mention that because it did come through, but we have Eight of Wands, Strength, Judgment, Four of Wands, and Six of Wands. So I'll say, sorry, that's bothering me. <laughs> so I'll say, um, they really see you as a winner. <laughs> like with the Six of Wands and the Strength card here, um, especially with like the little kind of like haughty expression on this lion's face. Um, it's like a look of determination here, right? Um, they really see you as someone who is so successful and if you don't see yourself that way now i think that that will be something that is sort of a transformation you go through or maybe you're just not someone who sees yourself very clearly but i do think that you're going to be meeting your future spouse at a time when you're doing really well in other areas of your life like maybe you have had a lot of career success at the time that you're meeting your future spouse. I do think there's a lot going on. There's a lot changing in your life when you meet your future spouse. Um, maybe you've gone through like a glow up, but there's something there where you just come off as like really successful, put together, polished, um, someone who really has their stuff together. Um, I feel like they, they just see you as like really confident, self-assured, but in like a very organized way. Like you just seem like someone who's really capable of handling whatever. Like someone who would be great at like multitasking, juggling a bunch of different things at one time. You're kind of like that person who's like, people are like, how do you do it? Like, how do you manage all of that? With the eight of wands, like there's so much going on in your life that like people are kind of, your future spouse especially is like, whoa, like how do they do that? How do they juggle so much? Um, and it's very sweet too that judgment is here at the center because Leo also rules the heart. And with judgment, um, I think of like I, the Egyptians and like the, um, the scales. And so the idea was that after you die, your, your heart would be placed on a scale, weighted against a feather. And at the end of your life, your heart should be as light as a feather. You shouldn't be weighed down with regrets of like things that you've done wrong you know, to other people or whatever. So ideally, like your heart should be as light as a feather and that's that judgment, you know, it's the judgment at the end of your life. How light is your heart? I think they see you as like having a heart of gold, okay? They see you as someone who is very pure hearted, someone who has the best intentions, someone who is always trying to do their best, someone who's always trying to manifest positive things someone who's always trying to speak positivity into existence, someone who's really optimistic, but also someone who's a go-getter, someone who balances that out with practical action, someone who also really manages to take care of themselves and they share that love and that support with other people. I think you're someone who gives really great advice, um, someone who would make a great counselor. You know, people really go to you because you seem like you have it all together and you have such a positive outlook and you always have a kind word for everybody. Like your future spouse really sees you as someone who is very sweet and very giving, but also someone who, again, is like very confident and capable. Um, Cause you're, you're not all talk, you know, you do the action too. And with the four of wands here, like they see you as the one, definitely they would describe you as the one, um, someone that they can really see a future with and it's funny, like in your group in particular with this Four of Wands, I'm just drawn to how carefree they seem and how in love and just, yeah, they're, they're like, I could spend the rest of my life like just dancing with you. Like I just, it, it, it's sort of, you would be sort of the couple that like works hard to play hard. Um, Cause there's just this energy of like, 
I can see myself living such a full life with you. You know, um, pile one was like maybe a little bit more work oriented in some ways. Like I want to build with you. I want to build with you. Whereas you in pile two, there is an energy of that with the four of wands, like building a solid foundation, building a long term future. But there's also this emphasis on fun that I don't think was present in pile one as strongly as it is here. Um, yeah, there's this desire to have fun, to be carefree, you know, because they really, I, I, there's a, sort of this energy of like, they see how hard you work and they want to take you on vacation. Like they, they're like, you deserve it. You've earned it. And you would be open to that because you, you have like this understanding of like self care. So I feel like that's something you two would be a, in agreement on. I don't feel like they'd have to force you into that. I feel like you would want to um, maybe like travel or like, you know, do something fun together on the weekend. Uh, you know, like it, it doesn't have to be some sort of like huge trip. But yeah, definitely they want to, they, they just really enjoy your company, I think is really coming through very strongly here. I do feel like they're part, I do feel like they're going to shake up your life and you're going to shake up theirs. I do feel like potentially you guys could have manifested each other. Maybe you come into each other's lives in an unexpected way. Um, you come into each other's life very suddenly. Um, I do feel like maybe the pace of this relationship is faster than what I was seeing in pile one as well. Mm -hmm. But there is some overlap here. So like I said, if you were drawn to pile one, there may be a couple messages there. I'm not sure that everything will resonate, but there may be a few messages there for you. Okay, let's find out some more information. And actually, I want to see... Yeah, I have room to put that over there, I think. Okay, <laughs> pile two. How does your future spouse see you? Pile two. How would your future spouse describe you to other people? Pile two. <laughs> I always laugh when this card comes out, this trespassers cards. It's one of my favorite in this deck. Okay, we've got autumn. And we also have the green fairy. Okay, so a couple messages here. With the trespassers card, this reminds me of this strength card as well. They see you as someone who is very protective, almost like mama bear energy. Like you defend the people you love, the people you care about. Like you would not for a second stand by and let one of your friends get talked down to or like any injustice that you would see in the world, like you would speak up. You're really like an advocate. Um, Cause things that are unjust, I think really bother you. Things that feel unfair or just ethically wrong, like you wouldn't stand by and say nothing. You would speak up. And they really admire that about you. And yeah, they would describe you as someone who's very protective of what you love and you're wanting to defend it <laughs> for sure. I do think there's a little bit too here of them saying like, sometimes you can be a bit, I don't want to say possessive because that comes off as a very strong word, but kind of like, it's kind of cute, I think, to them in a sense of like, you're not, that they know you're not going to share. Like <laughs> they know that you're the type of person like, you're my person, we are in an exclusive relationship, point blank period, and that's it. Like you're not, like they know that you're not someone who would tolerate someone cheating on you or someone disrespecting you um, in any way, you know? It's like they, they understand that and like they get it and they, they're saying, there's just this sort of like, they think it's cute when you get jealous sometimes, but they're also like, listen, like there's nothing to worry about. Like I'm not going anywhere. I am your future spouse. Like obviously I want to marry you and spend my life with you. Like it's kind of funny. They're like, you know, you could chill on that aspect a bit. <laughs> they're just being honest. Sometimes you can be a little bit jealous and <laughs> they're like, you, you could chill out with that. <laughs> Okay, 
Um, and then with the autumn card here, um, this is interesting. They kind of admire your ability to go with the flow. Because if you think about in autumn, you know, trees lose their leaves, right? Like they go through that process, they go through that loss every year. Like if you, like they just, they roll with the punches, like they know that this is part of life. And so I think that when you encounter like the autumn season of your life where you're having to let things go or make peace with things you can't change, um, you know, you're having to go through like maybe a grieving process, whatever, you just roll with it. You know, like they love how adaptable you are, how you meet every challenge like head on, how you trust yourself to handle difficult situations. Like they like how you're, you know, calm in a crisis. Like maybe not all the time, no one's perfect, but more so than the average person. Like again, there's this, this energy that they really like how you handle things, like how you get stuff done. They really see you as that leader, which I think is cool. Um, I think also with Autumn here, for some of you, maybe you've had to let go of a lot in your life and you've had to rebuild. Um, and, and I think that they respect that too. They respect that resilience and that inner strength. That's where I feel like a lot of the overlap between Pile 1 and you comes from is this Autumn card. Mm -hmm. I feel like Autumn is also too... It's a season of warmth, which is always interesting, right? Um, if you think of the colors associated with autumn, it's very warm, even though typically in autumn, at least in the United States, that's when things are starting to get colder outside, right? Like nature is starting to get colder. We're starting to go into winter. Um, so it's kind of like this funny juxtaposition. Um, and, and I think they, they sort of see you that way. Like you're, you're, you're very complex. You're not is easily describable as someone who would be like a summer, right? Like you're you're a little bit more, you're more difficult to pin down because I think there's this warmth to you, but there's also this ability to detach. And sort of like, they really admire how you're able to emotionally detach from people, places, and things that are not good for you or no longer have a place in your life. They're like, that's real strength <laughs> to be able to do that. Um, and they respect that. They respect that about you. Now with the green fairy, this to me calls back the six of wands where like everything you touch grows. Like they just see you as someone who is really great at nurturing things. Like they could definitely see you as someone who would make a great parent, but also in terms of like, your creative projects or your career or even like your household like you just have this ability to make things beautiful and abundant and yeah you're just there's this like nurturing side to you it's like everything you touch blooms like you you know you would be someone they would say like wow this person can really make a house a home or this person can make a job a career this person could make a creative project, a side hustle, their full-time job, like this person could, um, so be, would be someone who would raise like incredible people, like you would be a great parent, um, yeah, <laughs> and they just see you as that sort of, um, almost like earth mother kind of energy there as well, um, with the green fairy, okay, yeah, they definitely see you as beautiful with the green fairy too. It's just giving me like a little bit of Taurus energy as well. Okay, let's see here. Pile two, how would your future spouse describe you? Pile two, how would your future spouse describe you? Oh my gosh, flexible, right on top of Autumn. Remember when I said they see you as very adaptable? Yeah, they see you as so adaptable. And I think that goes back to that Leo resilience, that strength, like, like this person can handle anything. We have unrequited love. Pile two, how would your future spouse describe you? How would your future spouse describe you? 
know I've got message. Okay, it's interesting. With this unrequited love card, I do think there's this energy, and I honestly can't tell if it's you or if it's them, but one of you doesn't see the other person clearly at first. There's this energy of, okay, with that judgment card in the very beginning, there's this energy of, I misjudged you. Like, sort of like, um, I underestimated you. I'm sorry that I didn't see it earlier. Like, I'm sorry I didn't see you sooner for who you are, for what you are. But I can't tell if it's you or them. That's interesting. Let's see if we can clarify that. Let's see if we can clarify who that is. Let's get... I love these for clarifying because they're so small. Spirit, can we clarify the unrequited love card? I wonder if you have maybe like a false start with your future spouse. Or maybe this is someone from your past and they just... They weren't seeing you clearly. You hadn't, maybe you hadn't gone through your glow up yet. You know, like maybe you were more insecure in the past. Let's see. Spirit, can we clarify the unrequited love? Two of cups. Oh my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? To go from unrequited love to the two of cups, the card of a healthy, balanced connection. I love that reassurance of like, no, 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 everything's good. <laughs> Page of swords. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, Page of swords. This was either you or them. And it's funny because we also have message here. So take this if it resonates, but one of you in the beginning or if you know this person from your past they were afraid to speak up or you were afraid to speak up there was something there about someone who was actually like talkative and extroverted or if not extroverted at least someone who because even leos can be quiet um something there about someone not showing up as their authentic self like like a, a queen or a king masquerading as a page, okay? Like someone who's actually like very confident, but for some reason around the other person, they were quiet, they were reserved, they wouldn't show who they really were, you know? And, and then it's like when you come back together or as you get to know each other better, that communication with message here finally comes through, they finally open up, they finally start chatting, they're finally showing who they truly are. You know, when that initial nervousness goes away, that shyness goes away and they show who they authentically are, that's when this love connection will just lightning speed, like <laughs> will suddenly um, transform. So. Yeah, if you know that you're really shy when you first meet people or maybe this person brings that out in you, then this would be you, this Page of Swords. Um, otherwise though, that could just be your future spouse saying like, I'm sorry that I was so shy before and that I wasn't opening up or talking to you. So just take whichever resonates. Um, it, it's still kind of hard for me to tell. I almost... I kind of feel like it's you, but I'm not 100% certain, which makes me think maybe in this group it's a bit split. Okay, sorry. If, if it's not super clear, I don't, I'm not going to just make stuff up. <laughs> so that's as, as clearly as I can see it from the cards. Okay. All right, pile two. How would your future spouse describe you? How would your future spouse describe you? Pile two. Mystery. Okay. I feel like this just cleared this up for me. Okay. Yeah, you guys are, initially you're going to be really shy. And 
it isn't until you open up and your your authentic self and you're in that Leo energy that and when I say Leo, I mean that confident, like speaking your mind kind of energy. Um, because you know, Leo is also like a social butterfly. That is going to um really like when you take that mask off and you show who you are, that's when they fall in love with you. And I think also just with how adaptable you are, and remember how I said with Autumn, you're a bit more complex. I think it's harder for them to describe you. It's harder for them to like put into words and articulate exactly how they see you because you're such a, like you're an interesting character, pile too. <laughs> soul connection. They would describe you as their soulmate, as their divine counterpart. Um, they would describe you as the person that they were meant to be with. They would describe you as their true love. Okay. And I think also, given that this is here, could be that this is like an opposites attract sort of thing. And maybe if you're more quiet and more reserved when you're around them, like out of shyness or whatever the case may be, um, maybe they think you're too quiet and then they get to know you and you start talking to them and that's when they're like, oh, I, <laughs> I misjudged this person. Actually, I'm really into this person. And you know, then I think they fall pretty quickly with the eight of wands in love with you. Okay, what zodiac sign does, let me see. No, I'm not, okay. <laughs> what zodiac sign does Pile two's future self, future spouse see them as. How would Pile two's future spouse describe them? Sagittarius. Okay, yeah, they definitely see you as a fire sign because we've already gotten Leo, and now we have Sagittarius. So they definitely see you as a really warm person. Um, and it's funny because like the Page of Swords, that's so at odds with the Sagittarius. So I do think in the beginning you're not really showing up as your authentic self. Um, so once you do show who you really are, uh, I think that is when they they see you clearly. So they definitely see you as a very truthful person. They see you as someone that they can have adventures with. Remember we were getting travel and like trips and like having fun on the weekends and doing getaways. So that's very Sagittarius energy. Um, definitely see you as someone who someone who would be faithful and a sense of like Sagittarius is very honest you know Sagittarius isn't a liar so they would definitely see you as someone that you know would be honest and tell the truth you know to them you know Sagittarius always reminds me of like Nicki Minaj <laughs> like um definitely see you as someone who I remember too I'm sorry like all these messages are coming through now they're getting like a little bit fuzzy but um, remember how we had the green fairy and I said everything you touch blooms and I was saying it was reminding me of Taurus energy with the green but also now I'm thinking of like everything you touch blooms that reminds me of Sagittarius because of Jupiter and expansion and being lucky so yeah they would definitely see you in that regard as well this is gonna be a really, really odd message, <laughs> but in front of me there are three windows and I have been like so distracted, and this doesn't ever happen, but I've been so distracted by this flower. Like there's just this one pink flower to right here and I can't, it, it just, I'm fixated on it and it's distracting when I'm trying to read these cards and it, there's just this energy of them seeing you in a very romanticized way. You know, they are just really enamored by your beauty, but it's not just physical beauty, although they do see you as very physically attractive. It's your inner beauty as well, like not to be cheesy, but yeah, your beauty, like I'm getting so distracted by this flower and I feel like that's a metaphor for how you distract them. Like you're, it's not just, it's like your energy like it's not even just how you look it's your energy like you could be like just woken up out of bed looking really rough and they still would not be able to take their eyes off of you that's that's what's coming through pretty strongly um 
I do think they also see you with the eight of wands and this energy of like things rushing in and then with Sagittarius being here too, I think they also see you as sometimes as someone who's a bit impatient and because you have that impatience, you're like, I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. I'll just get it done myself. Um, they kind of see you in that energy. And it's, but in a, it's sort of like they find it cute. <laughs> they find that cute that you're like, I'll just get it done myself. I'll just do it myself. Um, sorry, that message just came through. I think that's everything I'm getting from Sagittarius. <laughs> but yeah, okay, I'm just rambling now. Let's end your reading with a love token from your future spouse. So pile two, love token from their future spouse. Okay, good for breakfast in bed, yeah. <laughs> Even when you've just woken up and you still look probably crusty, <laughs> your future spouse is still going to find you so beautiful. Um, they definitely want to treat you to a nice breakfast in bed. They don't care how your hair looks or anything like that. They just find you so beautiful and they're like, I know you wanna do everything for yourself, but let me take care of you sometimes. Let me spoil you sometimes. Yeah, okay. And maybe, hey, maybe your future spouse is also a really good cook. So <laughs> pile two, this was your reading. I hope it resonated. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was fun. Um, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you always know when I upload. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next one. Please take care, pile two. Sorry. I will say also, if you have Libra energy, I wouldn't be surprised if there's like Libra placements in your chart that I forgot to say. Given that I was thinking so much about the scales earlier with the feather and the heart, and there was so much here about beauty and attraction, you could have some Libra placements. Um, but yeah, okay, that was it, I swear, that was it. <laughs> I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care, pile two. All right, pile three, welcome to your reading. So let's find out how your future spouse would describe you. Pile three, how would your future spouse describe you, please, spirit? Pile three, please, spirit, how would their future spouse describe them? A big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. Pile three. The first two groups were great, so I have high hopes for you guys as well. Pile three, how would your future spouse describe you? Pile three. Do one more shuffle. All right, pile three. How would your future spouse describe you? Pile three. So we have the King of Pentacles. Eight of Wands. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. And we have the King of Swords. It's funny, your reading is laying out right now like Pile One did. Okay, so King of Pentacles and the King of Swords and then the Eight of Wands. In pile one, like one figure represented the future spouse and the other figure represented whoever chose that pile. With you all, it's a bit different. <laughs> I feel like your future spouse is describing the King of Pentacles as you, but also the King of Swords. And what they're saying is with this Eight of Wands being in the middle, your future spouse is like, they are someone who can flip between these two energies like that. The Eight of Wands is very fast moving energy and they're saying one minute they could be the King of Pentacles and if they need to, they can flip the script and they can be the King of Swords in an instant, okay? Um, now remember, this is divine masculine energy. We're not talking about gender, okay? But they definitely see you in that divine masculine energy the king of pentacles like someone who is really stable and reliable and practical but also someone who 
is in like that Taurus energy of like enjoying the pleasures of life <laughs> like really like working hard to play hard but also in that like Capricorn energy where you you just look like money you look like status like you look you could be poor and still like look like you have it all together it's the way you present yourself it's the way you carry yourself you just present like you are put together and you are in these are both energies that really command respect and there's a quiet confidence i think it's not wands like if the if the king of wands were here it would be a lot flashier right but with the king of pentacles and the king of swords it's the difference between self-assurance and confidence and and there's this self-assurance that you present with because it's like you really know yourself and you know your strengths and you know at any time you can call upon this energy or that energy whenever you need it. Sorry, there's like some kind of weird noise. I don't know what that is on the street, but hopefully it stops soon. I'm so sorry, pile three. Um, but yes, so like you can flip between these two energies. Like when you need to be the king of swords, you can be so articulate, so clear cut in your communication. You know, um, if someone tries to take you out of like this calm energy, you can flip the script and just tell them about themselves without having to like re raise your voice or resort to name calling or something like that. You can just stand up for yourself and other people, but in a way where you maintain your composure and your calm. And I feel like there's this energy your future spouse is saying like, I always feel so comforted by you. I always feel so safe and secure with you because you have this self-assurance. You know, like I feel like I'm safe when I am with you because you have this energy about you. Let's find out some more information here. And so obviously too, we have air sign energy and earth sign energy coming through. 10 of wands. Yeah, they feel like you take on so much and that you can really handle everything on your own. And they almost kind of wish that you didn't work quite so hard, but they also admire your hustle. <laughs> like they're saying like, I wish that you would relax more but also I wouldn't want to change it. Like I wouldn't want to change you. Like I, I know that you're someone who is so hardworking and that's what you thrive in. Like you thrive in that success. These are two very successful energies, right? Um, so I would never like try to slow you down. Like I get that you have a lot of dreams and ambitions and, I, and I'm not here to try to slow you down. Like even though I think you should rest, and I may tell you that I respect that you're going to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And I'm not trying to change that about you. <laughs> um, Princess of Cups. It's cute too because they, I, I feel like you bring out, I'm, I'm sorry, I feel like they bring out a flirtier side to you. And they're acknowledging that as well. So we have a little bit of divine feminine energy coming through now. But with the Princess of Cups, I do feel like they love that. I think the initial stages of you guys getting to know each other, they're going to really love how you flirt with them. Oh, that's why you work so hard. The five of pentacles. You've known lack. You've known scarcity. You know what it's like to struggle financially and you don't want to be put back in that energy. And so that's why they understand why you work so hard. They get it. Yeah, they're like, I, I, I totally understand why that is. Yeah, they think you're a great flirt though, but I think you, I think that tickles them a little bit how flirty you are. Yeah, even if you're not, even if you wouldn't characterize yourself in that way. Um, yeah, because we also have the princess of swords. Whenever we have these princess cards, I do think of like flirtation, especially because we have cups, emotions, and then we have swords, communication. Yeah, I think verbally, 
you're really you're really flirty yeah I think you're really I think you're a smooth talker pile three <laughs> I think they're into that they're really into that okay and then we have the Sun here too they, they like how you're you're a visionary is what they would say like they love how you talk about your dreams and your future and your plans and it really turns them on like they love that you have such a clear picture of what you want and that you're going after it like they love your ambition and they love that you don't give up and with the six of cups like you have a lot of dreams of giving back you know maybe for some of you, you want to give back to your family maybe for others of you there's something like you want to give your talent to other people you want to share your gifts with other people you you want to do some sort of service that helps other people um, but they love that it's not just for the sake of money like there's more to it than that and it's your passion they love your passion um, there's something that you're really really into that just lights up your eyes when you talk about it um, yeah that's what really draws them in okay I do think in terms of like zodiac signs you guys are a much more mixed group than pile one and pile two and pile three is usually like yeah, pile three always has a different vibe let's just say that <laughs> in a very good way um, but pile three is like my wild card pile yeah I would definitely say that's a running theme I don't know why it just is all right pile three how would your future spouse describe you how would your future spouse describe you, Pile 3? Ooh, we have Trillium. So this is also, when I look at that card, I always think of Taurus. So definitely Taurus energy coming through. But again, like we've seen quite a number of zodiac signs at this point. So it's all right if you're not a Taurus watching this. Let's get one more card here okay we have companions okay so a couple things here I think that many of you are animal lovers watching this pile and they love that about you like maybe you're a really great pet parent or maybe you just like are known for loving cats or dogs or um, yeah or maybe that's something that you advocate for maybe you're a vegetarian or a vegan um, but it's something that they love about you and it's definitely one of the first things like when they think of like someone who's an animal lover, they think of someone who's a great cat mom, I don't know. <laughs> they think of you, okay? Um, they love that you have this connection with animals. You know, um, every dog, every cat loves you, like that kind of thing. Um, they really like that about you. And I feel like there's also this sort of like connection to the earth. Um, they, they just see you in this earthy energy. I know we have the King of Pentacles and the King of Swords. Um, but there is a lot here about earth sign energy of like just they love how grounded you are i think that's what's coming through and that, that's what creates that sense of safety um i think you are very like nurturing in nature um like you kind of give off like mom or dad vibes in a way like um sorry if that weirds you out but you would be like the person in your friend group who you know um is looked at as like the mom right <laughs> like you um yeah i think you just really care for everyone like not just other people but animals as well and also like the environment like you care for everyone and everything um so they love that sensitivity to you that you're sensitive to the needs of other people um they would describe you as someone who is really compassionate with the trillium card though they wish that you took care of yourself better they do wish that like they do wish that you would slow down and rest but again like they're not trying to change you and they know there's sort of this uh maybe like workaholic kind of energy to you um that they know it wouldn't even matter if they told you to slow down because you wouldn't listen so it's 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 just more so like a private wish that they have that you would really stop and take some time for some self-care and they wish that you would love yourself and care for yourself the way that you nurture other people is coming through with a thinking of you card um it's really hard for them to get 
it's it's hard for them like it's not even just in the stage of like falling in love that you're on their mind all the time it's it's also because you work so hard even when you're married to them they're always going to be like thinking about you like I hope that they remembered to eat dinner like I know they're staying late at the office kind of thing but I hope that they you know eat a healthy dinner I hope they don't like forget to eat or you know just get some like chips from the vending machine like I hope they have a real meal or um you know like they like oh they're so busy like let me go fill up the gas in their car or oh they're so busy like you know like I feel like they try to help you when you're married in little ways because you're so independent and you're always so busy and doing things they're like let me try to be sneaky and help them and do it it's like they would have to sneak and take your car and fill it up because you would be like no 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 you don't have to do that you don't have to do that and but they want to they want to help you so it's like it's kind of cute like they have to help you out in sneaky ways because you're so independent they have to kind of go behind your back to help you <laughs> um because you won't take the time to take care of yourself and you won't accept the help so <laughs> That's something maybe you need to to work on a little bit like being able to receive love and help like Getting out of that ten of wands a little bit um, would be maybe something helpful for you to work on Because it makes them feel good to, to help you out so you know let them have it like let them do things for you sometimes That could just be a message though for you know when you're dating when you're married to this person All right pile three how would your future spouse describe you? Spirit, how would Pile Three's future spouse describe them? How would Pile Three's future spouse describe them? Okay, this influencing factors card, like career, just jumped out at me. Yeah, they um, <laughs> it's your it's your it's your ambition. <laughs> if there was anything that was going to make this connection a bit more difficult, it's how much you work. That that's all. Like they need more of your time. They need more of your time. They they just describe you as such a busy person. Like you always have so much going on. They wish that you would connect more with the in the now card to the present moment they wish that you because it's like even when they're spending quality time with you sometimes you're not fully there because you're worried about what you have to do the next day or um you know you're thinking about something maybe you did wrong at work that you can't let go of that kind of thing because i think you're they're saying you're too hard on yourself and you're too self-critical they're saying that as well and they're saying that you don't take time to enjoy your success and that you're always thinking about the next thing and the next goal and even when you do succeed and you succeed a lot you don't even stop to enjoy it and savor it and they they want that for you they want you to appreciate how far you have come from that five of pentacles energy and they feel like you don't and it's not they're not trying to like add to like your own self-criticism okay like they just are like desperately I think trying to get this message to you now so maybe this doesn't have to be a problem in the future okay um, they're trying to be like you know you could do some self-care now you could ask for help now you could receive love now you could receive help and support now like you know this doesn't have to be a lesson for the future you could start working on it now before you know you meet me and we fall in love and all that <laughs> so um, your future spouse is saying that I do feel though with this intimacy card there's so much love here and they they really do like even though they're saying this about you it's more so like this is an observation I have made and I'm saying this kind of is like maybe a little bit like tough love like I really want you to do some self-care and slow down but also like I accept you for who you are and even if you don't ever change even if you don't spend enough time with me and you're always busy you're still the one for me you know every no one's perfect and you are still the one for me and the level of intimacy that we have together is 
unmatched. Like, no one will ever be as, like, close to me physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually as you. You know, and I think the physical intimacy between you guys is out of this world. <laughs> and maybe that is part of how maybe you guys um, come back together when you have spent too much time apart. But um, yes, and I would say too, with this one more try card, for some of you, maybe it is a little bit rocky trying to figure out like in the beginning how you guys fit into each other's lives because you're so busy. Um, you know, maybe that is a challenge, maybe there's a false start, maybe it takes a while for this to like, you know, um, get to a place of marriage because you have to rearrange your life and make space for this person and maybe that's hard for you. Um, I would say with one more try as well, it could be that this person is already in your life and maybe currently you're going through a difficult time with this person. But I don't, that's, if you are single right now, as single as a Pringle, oh my God. Um, if you're single right now, that doesn't have to be your message, okay? Remember, this is a general reading. Could be, like I said, maybe in the beginning it's a bit challenging, like finding the time to even be in a relationship. Okay. Pile three, let's get some more information. <laughs> How would your future spouse describe you? How would your future spouse describe you? How would your future spouse describe you? We have hope. Aw, we've got soul connection. This came out in pile two as well. I love to see it. Bottom of the deck, we have true love. Remember how I said, like, no matter what challenges are there, you are the one for them. Like, they are so confident about that. They have not a single, like, double confirmation there. There's not a shred of doubt in their mind that you are not the one for them. They don't in any way, like, regret marrying you. Like, this is great for the longevity of your marriage. And I think they want to make sure that you know that because even if, um, you know, it seemed like maybe they were being a bit harsh with you before and like saying like, I really wish you would, you work too much. <laughs> um, they, they want you to know, like even with our challenges in our relationship, like this is real love, this is real life, this is true love. And I think you're my soulmate and I think you're my divine counterpart. And that level of intimacy is physical, emotional, spiritual, mental. Like it's, you are the full complete package. Like there will never be another love in my life like you. And with the hope card, there's just this energy of like, you are everything that they prayed for. You are everything they could hope for in a partner. There's just so much love here, so much love. And I feel like because there's so much love between you, they can be honest with you. They can tell you how they feel and what they need. They can communicate that because they know you care. Okay, let's get our zodiac sign. So how would Pile 3's future spouse describe them? What zodiac sign do they see them as? Spirit, Pile 3. How would Pile 3's future spouse, please Spirit, view them? Pile 3. Scorpio. All right. So remember how I said like in terms of zodiac signs, you guys were a mixed bag. Oh, bottom of the deck, Taurus. We did get a lot of Taurus. Um, Cause we got air sign, we got earth sign energy, we got water and now we have water again. Um, even with the sun, we've got Leo energy, so some fire. So I think your pile three, you guys are a mixed bag. I think maybe this is gonna be a popular group. Um, Maybe a lot of people are going to choose pile three or 
you guys just have a birth chart. My birth chart's kind of all over the place, so maybe you guys relate to that where, you know, you have significant placements in multiple modalities, so that could be a thing. Um, with Scorpio, though, that makes a lot of sense where maybe you're not, like, Scorpios tend to, they feel things very, very deeply. They have so much emotional depth but they don't they're very protective over that you know they don't um just share how they feel with everybody and it can take a while for them to open up and so your future spouse is saying like that's that's kind of part of it right like that king of swords energy in the beginning like sometimes you're a bit guarded and then you're working a lot and so you know like i, I think you flirt with the princess of cups i think you flirt and but i think in terms of that like emotional opening up it may take a while and i think your future spouse is saying like you're worth waiting for like you're worth waiting for um and then with taurus like that's pretty self-explanatory like we've had that a lot where you know like you're just so hard working you're a bit stubborn um you're really practical grounded stable like we, we, we've already gone we've already gone over that that's just confirmation at this point um I think with Scorpio too like they really admire your loyalty um yeah they, they there's a lot of trust here there's a lot of trust here all right let's end with a love token from your future spouse to so pile three love token from their future spouse good for a long massage okay i could see you needing a massage after a long day at work <laughs> yes <laughs> so maybe also physical touch is a love language for you or um, your future spouse or maybe both of you share that as a love language because we did get the intimacy card as well and then scorpio is you know known for being a sexual sign because of its association with Mars um, so yes <laughs> massage definitely makes sense for your group so pile three if you enjoyed this reading if it resonated please consider liking this video um, please consider subscribing um, hitting the notification bell so you always know when I upload sharing the video all that good stuff um, I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has been supporting this channel and I will see you in my next one. Take care, pile three.